everybody. Welcome to wall shows. That's right. We're going to learn how to paint walls just like this. All right, the common mistake that people make is they have like one color for the whole thing, like as if they're painting a real wall. A real wall? Yes, you want the whole thing to be one color. However, it's like you have some burnt sienna in there and white and a little bit of magenta. I don't have magenta. Can you hand me my magenta, please? All right, so I'm going to get a little bit crazy on this thing. Just out, the, just out the values here. A little bit different, not too different. And normally you want to have like a darker on the bottoms. A lot of times walls will be lighter here, about in the middle. They get darker up here near the corners. As you can see in this room, same thing. Lighter in this area where it's lit up for the figures. And darker on the bottom. Thank you. Whew. Okay. Add a little mojo to this thing. A little magenta. And the colors when I mix them up. I do mix up like uh, even colors. So in other words, they're not... Um, it's like a nice little accent right there, so it's a little more magenta than she had, so I have more brown, I have more magenta, etc. So then, don't paint like with brush strokes. <laughs> okay, don't paint with brush strokes. So what you do, instead, use the side of the brush after you have your base coat. I'll stumble it in there, let the paint kind of fall off. So the edges need to be really clean. However, once you've got the edges done, the rest of the interior of the wall should be like a giant party. So this is needs to be super clean. And after you have some colors on there, take a sponge, lightly tap it, back up. You don't want to blend too much. You could blend it out so it's almost perfect. With walls, you don't want it perfect. All right, so now I got a little bit of that. I'll mix up a little bit lighter, another color. Come in here. I got the brown, magenta. And this is layer two. We'll call what she did as a base coat. All right, so then I'm gonna get a really clean edge. So to do that, I'm not gonna rely on my eyeball. <clears throat> Eyes, lies. Oh, that didn't quite work out. Eyes, lies. Eyes, lie? Yeah. I gotta work on my slogans. All right, so I'll draw like a guideline. I know it's totally straight right there. Always go back in and shore up your, uh, your line work with like a nice clean uh, ruler and pencil, colored pencil. So then watch this. Not to get, to get a clean edge on buildings. You can't get a clean edge like this. That's impossible. You have to always push into the line that you're painting. So like right here, I'll start here and then ooze my way into it. Cover like half a line. And this is considered a bad line because it's one line. But then I'll go back into it and mess up the line so you don't see a hard edge on the other side. All right, so then I'm gonna get it in there, wiggling it around. Now I'm starting to have a nice clean line, except for right here. That's a little bit on the dark side. Come in here and same thing, push into it. Come all the way down. And the paint, now that you have a thick base coat, the paint can be kind of watery-ish. And this is gonna be thicker down here, I mean darker down here on the bottom. Darker on the bottom, lighter on the top. And you skip around too, like once you have a color mixed up, I'll show you. So I'm gonna mix up another color. And this is not gonna be the same as any other color. They're all like a little bit different, which is good as long as you keep mixing it around and trading out. Maybe a little more white. All right, so this is another new color. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that was way too magenta. All right, silly me. All right, get rid of that. Then here, I'm going to do the same thing, side of the brush, and it's just a lot of layers. So with walls, if you can't do a good wall, you shouldn't be doing abstract. This is good practice for abstract, so you understand like layers, and it's not like just one and done kind of thing. So now I'm getting more over here. This looks a little more distressed, and then right now it's kind of all about the same. I have different patterns, but they're... Uh, the values aren't quite all that different. So I'm going to go darker down here on the bottom. Darker, take the raw umber. Maybe a dot of black, not too much. Some magenta. And down here on the bottom, I'm going to go even darker. Just because I can. Clean edge on the bottom, push down. There's my clean edge. 
Now I gotta get rid of that clean edge brush stroke. So once again, you don't wanna see any visible brush strokes. You don't wanna see any of these. Those are terrible. That's called a rookie brush stroke. And then up here, squeeze in, so it's a little bit darker in the bottom. Now I have value changes, I have color interpretations, and things are happening over here. That looks like a ghetto. Uh, you can smooth it up more if you don't like this ghetto-y look. Um, I'll show you how to do that. Now I'll add a tint of it, a little more magenta. Keep changing the color once again. <clears throat> this is really light right in here. So I'm like using the side of the brush, scumbling, and this will give me like some more variety. And you have like Venetian plaster textures and stuff like that, not just flat uh, wallpaper. <clears throat> All right, so then like down here, you can pick out the areas you don't like. I would say the next step is to go over areas you think look kind of garbagey. So like down here, this looks like a smudge fest. I'll go over it with a little bit lighter volume. And then that might be about it. Right now you can see all the brush strokes out. So then you paint it, take a sponge, and go over it. So when you're done with an abstract wall, you should be, or wall, you should be able to see evidence of at least six layers of paint. So if you go, if this was six layers of paint, it looks like one. So if you go over it with one thick layer, then another thick layer, then another thick layer, technically it's three, but it's gonna read as one layer. All right, so here's another technique you can add. Well, I'm gonna get this a little smoother up here. On the smoother near the top, sponge, haze it out a little bit more. You can see how you can get kind of a smoother blend, more choppy down here. We're like <clears throat> wheelchairs from the crazy uncle hit and stuff like that. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with a regular piece of paper like this. Well, it's not a regular piece of paper, it's Bristol board. So it's a little bit stronger. And I'll mix my color, a little bad of it, scoop it up. I've got a little bead of this color on there. I'll bend it like this, and then put some of the paint on there. And then I'll take the sponge and get rid of it. So you don't want it to look like a palette knife. Currently, that's what it looks like. All right, so now I've got a palette knife. Then take your sponge and get rid of it. You do the brush, you take your sponge, Get rid of it. I lost Mr. Stinky. Oh, there he is. Whoo, that scared me. All right, so then you want to avoid also all the little dots from the canvas. Push a sponge down heavy enough so you get rid of the sponge textures or the canvas textures. I'll leave some of it like that. Blur it out. <clears throat> so now you can have like some of it. You can almost leave it like that. So you can almost be done if you have like more of these throughout. Um, I'll blur this out a little more. That's kind of cool when you're doing it. Just like take the sponge and all you do is come up here and go doo -doo -doo. That's it. Just a little doodle doodle. -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Down here, looks like not enough layers of paint. I'll scoop that up again. and do a little more lube down here in the bottom. So I'm moving it around so it comes off more of an organic shape. There's no patterns to it. <clears throat> All right, so now I was gonna turn, I'm gonna turn that into this. So I'll watch this, so I'm gonna come in here, blur down again a little bit. Let me blur this out quite a bit here because it has like the texture of the canvas, which I can't stand. That looks like a rookie maneuver. All right, so then we got some little patches there, and that maybe I'll even leave. You can leave those things. So this is like layer one, layer two, layer three. I'm gonna get down to layer five now or four, and I can come back in instead of the palette knife. I can go back in with a regular paintbrush and sponge. Okay, so now we got a little bit of everything. So this doesn't look all clean and fancy. This looks clean like move in ready however the problem is is that there's no light change there's no sense of atmosphere and the more simple your building is like you have just a few walls you have a figure so the walls have to stand on their own they have to work on their own like a painting you should be able to take the figure out 
and that building should work on its own. So to do that, you need a lot of layers and interpretation. Okay, next phase. Uh, this is the detail phase. Coming up, I'll take a nice round brush. If I have one. Oh, oh I saw it sink. That's a good one there. All right, I'll show you some other techniques. With this, as you can see, we have, because of the random brush strokes, um, they create the illusion of like pits and high spots and low areas and whatnot. So now I'm going to do a glaze of raw umber and black and magenta. Glaze, once again, is thin paint. Thin paint, a lot of water. And all I have to do to make that look more three-dimensional, watch this. Come in here, outline the top of it right there, and then have it come down a little bit. Then take your finger and tap it out. And I could do that elsewhere with like a little scratch. Got a little scratch right here. Come in here, a little scratch kind of thing. I'll show you what we do with that here in a second. And the key is though, is after you do like a little detail like this, a little fun little detail here. Here we go. Now I'll go tap, tap. You can barely see it now. But then I take a highlight. So, and walls in general so look like it was fun to paint. If you're just kind of mechanically getting the wall done, uh, no fun. Oh, that was a good one. You hear that? Yeah. If you're mechanically getting the wall done, it looks like no fun. Yeah. That was a good moment. Yeah. Can you write that down for me? Yeah. Yeah, good quotes well by Stevens. All right, then down here in the bottom, I'll do like a little bit of a white. See that little white line right there? I'll blur it out just a little bit. So right here, we don't know what we're looking at. And if I go a little white line right here, and fade it out just a smidge. Same thing with this little line right here. I have a dark line right next to it. If I put a little white line next to it, fade it out just a titch. Right here, a little pit and tap, and pit, and tap. And so you're, you're just kind of going through it and then adding highlights to things that are already there. So like this little line right here, add like a little bit of a highlight to it. And that darker section looks like it goes in a little bit, like texture. And a lot of walls aren't smooth. A lot of walls do have texture on them. They do have stucco and plaster and other things to build up uh, levels and depth. Okay, a few more highlights on that thing. And that could be done for this phase. When you're done with this phase, you can go over this with glazes. So glazes is the last thing you put on there. It's gonna be like the hazy areas that you mark. Could be a totally different color. You could change the color more to maroon or whatever color you want. Um, yeah, sure, I'll show you. This isn't ready for glazes because it's uh, too wet, but I don't care, it's not my project. All right. I go in here, a little brown and magenta. So if you have an area that's not quite the way you want it, put the paint on, kind of mop it on, and then with a sponge, scumble it, and it'll like ch change the color, but subtly. So you're gonna end with glazes. And then that is just about it. Cut. It's and cut. <laughs> and that is about it. Cut. And cut. And that is it. Yay!